Hello and welcome. I'm Tyler Edlin, yeah, and today I... Are... What? You're not Tyler Edlin. Yeah, my name is Tyler. Yeah, you're Tyler Borg. Oh. Uh, <sighs> come right. on. Right. Uh, let's try it again. Hey and welcome. I'm Tyler Bourne. I'm the lead concept artist working with Tyler Edlin over at Brush Off Studio. We've worked on a lot of different projects together with clients ranging from smaller indie studios to larger AAA game studios like Epic Games and Blizzard. Today we're going to look at how to improve our studies and how to ensure that we're actively learning while we study by combining multiple references together. Now, if you're anything like me, a digital person trapped inside of YouTube on your computer, then you've probably fallen into the trap of directly copying reference instead of studying from it. Even if your intentions are good, our minds tend to wander, and before you know it, you've probably just been copying without really retaining any information. Well, combining multiple things together is a great way to avoid that and ensure that you're studying thoughtfully. For example, what do you get when you mix lava and a tarantula? You get 2015's Lavalantula, starring Steve Gutenberg from Three Men and a Baby. By combining multiple ideas together, you're forced not to copy them and reinterpret them to create something brand new. This means that you can't copy directly, you're automatically having to think of a new solution. One of the easiest ways to do this is to take one subject and mix it with the art style of another. Here I've got a couple of studies I did combining some camping gear with the art style from Arcane. The first reference is easy, it's just a canteen. What I'm pulling from the Arcane reference is the great way they control their brush strokes. There's some fairly hard edges here, but they look soft because of the shift in value and hue are fairly minimal, and then some edges are just lost entirely. So the task is simple, paint a canteen in the way that it might appear in Arcane. Looking at this now, there's some stuff I'd probably change, but I can definitely say that I didn't copy either the photo or the arcane reference directly, so that's a win. Here's an example of Loish doing the same thing with some head studies in the style of JC Liondecker. A similar example is the do this in your own style exercises that you've probably seen online. You're essentially using another artist's piece as one reference and your own personal style as the second reference. Of course, you can combine multiple ideas together and smash them up into a new design or a new environment piece, whatever you want. What's great about this is it flexes multiple muscles. Like I said earlier, you're forced to reinterpret the reference, so you're creating something brand new. Now, if your combination does exist, like let's say you're mashing up a motorcycle and a taxi, well, that would look kind of like a tuk-tuk. So either don't use a tuk-tuk in your reference and come up with something new, or maybe just come up with a new idea entirely. The other great thing about this is this technique is used all the time when designing. So by doing this kind of thing in your studies, you're also flexing that design muscle, which leads to more design mileage. And as an added bonus, if you like your study, then you could potentially take it further into a full-fledged art piece. Let's take a look at a quick one-hour study that I did combining a waterfall from Iceland with some strange mechanical structures. Okay, so here is a quick one hour study where I'm combining some waterfalls from Iceland with these weird mechanical structures. I actually don't know what they are, um, but I thought they looked cool. So this initial line drawing is super loose. It's more just for me to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, it's not supposed to be pretty, but that's where a lot of the decision making is happening because I'm choosing, you know, which part of my composition is going to be these mountains and waterfall, which parts are going to be the mechanical structures that are going to be my focal point. So that's where a lot of the decision making is happening and the specifically the decision making around how I'm going to combine these two different references. And from there, it's just paint really. Um, with this particular piece, it's like I said, it's one hour. So it's sort of like a speed painting. I don't really believe in the idea of speed painting. I think it's it can be hurtful for people learning how to paint or draw. Um, I think a better use of your time is to do set a time limit but have a more specific goal in mind like just focus on value or just composition or just color etc um, and before doing this i actually did do some black and white composition studies so i'll show you those in a little bit um, so this is me tackling a little bit of everything there is some composition and a bit of color in there but um, 
I'm also, I also have no intention of really getting this anywhere near a finished piece within an hour. This is more just a, a daily warm up for me to get painting. So getting in the mountains there or the hills um, and then just trying to figure out the, the water. So um, this is the nice thing is like you can take any creative license you want. You definitely don't have to copy either of them verbatim. In fact, as I mentioned, you can't really copy either of them verbatim. Uh, so I figured I'd throw in a little bit more um, of say like a river leading us in. And we've got our structures. These things are very fun. I'd like to, to explore these a lot more in the future. So when doing these structures, obviously I am looking at the reference for these things in particular, but I'm not copying them verbatim. I'm just, I, I'm creating a new scene where in my mind, this is not this particular waterfall in Iceland. It is a new place, but just heavily inspired by it. And these structures are definitely not the ones from the reference either. I'm just sort of using the reference to come up with my own structures in my own composition. It's a lot more freeing to be inspired by the reference, but not having to keep yourself locked down. Don't be afraid to explore and play with it. Just adding in some smaller shapes, just uh, bits and pieces. The reference has a whole lot more actually, so I, I was simplifying. Um, you know, that's if you're on a time crunch like an hour, that's where a lot of your time can get wasted. It's just focusing too much on little details. So I'd like to add a lot more of just that visual noise, but I didn't want to waste time on it in this circumstance. Again, this is just a very quick and easy take on this. It's not complicated. I keep it very simple, very simplified. Just fixing up some of the visual breakup of the grass against the rocks there. And now I have most of it figured out, I'm just adding in just a few little details just to flash it out a little bit, like the little um, pebbles and grains and, and texture on the ground. And one thing I did change from the reference to is because this is a new piece and it's my own scene, um, I want to add a little bit more depth. So the idea of a few more rolling hills kind of or not really rolling hills but they're somewhere between a hill and a mountain um, but a few more sort of outcroppings between us and the waterfall to add a bit more depth that the iceland shot doesn't have there's some decent depth there but it's pretty flat ground so i figured let's add a few little elevation changes in there that the reference doesn't have so um one you know revelation is that the reference is not necessarily the perfect image you can actually try to improve or just not even necessarily improve but change in your own way that you'd like to see it be done so again just another note to not stick to the reference to verbatim you're you're allowed to change it and and just have fun with it and play So here is where I got the image in an hour. Again, uh, it's not meant to be a finished piece by any means. It's just a quick little study. And before that, I did a few quick little um, thumbnails where I just focused on composition using some value in our depth. Now there are tons of different ways to apply this kind of thing. You can do it with characters, creatures, environments, buildings. You name it, so go out and have fun, do some cool studies. If you'd like to try this exercise yourself, we've provided a reference sheet up on screen now. You can screen grab it and use it for your own practice. And here's an example using this reference sheet from student J.S. Parker. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to Tyler Edlin for having me on his channel. As always, if you have any questions or comments or ideas on what you'd like to see us cover in the future, just let us know in the comments. If you really want to level up your art game and come learn with us, I run the group mentorship with Tyler Edlin over on his Patreon. We'd love to have you join us, so if you're interested, the link is in the description below. Alright, thanks so much and have a good day.